Welcome to part two of Competency 15 Practice Quiz. In this video, we're still working with measures of central tendency. Number seven, in which one of the following groups of data is the mode less than the median? Okay, median is simply the middle number, so it isn't difficult to just look at where that number would be, what that number is. For example, in option A, we're looking for the very center number. 10 is the median, so we see that the mode is also 10, so the mode and median are equal. So that would not be a, a good option because we need the mode to be less. Okay, now go to the next one. Also, another thing is, if you notice, they put each all, all four of the options, the values are in order. So it's super easy to figure this out. I doubt they would do that for you on a test. They would probably have all of the numbers out of order. Then you would have to put them in order and select. But, you know, of course, you can eyeball it once you put them in order, which one the mode is. Okay, great. But this is the kind of question to see if you know your properties and definitions. Okay, so let's look at B. B, if we're going to go in the center, that would be whatever number is between 9 and 12. Of course, we could add 9 and 12 and then divide by 2, but you can also think about you have 9, 10, 11, 12. So it looks like the median, just where it is, we're talking about like 11 and a half. So I would say A is an option because nine is actually a mode and it is uh, less than your median. And the median value is where I have that uh, vertical mark. Well, let's go ahead and look at C. Now C, our mode is 15 and this would be 12 would be in the center. 12 is between 11 and 13, so that means our mode is greater, and that is not what our question is looking for. So we can mark that one out. Now let's look at D. Uh, same situation. We have 14 is your median, and 17 would be our mode. So yes, B would be the appropriate option. And it says A mode yeah, nine would be the, the option. Okay. All right. That's the best you can do with that. Maybe it satisfies. Option B satisfies. Okay. Let's look at eight. In a room of 16 people, the mean height of six people is 64 inches and the mean height of nine people of the remain, or uh, the mean height of nine of the remaining people is 74 inches. If the mean height for 16 people is 70.125, that's 70 and one eight inches, what is the height of the 16th person? Okay, if you think about what is the order of operations to get the mean, this will make sense, okay? And this is what we have. We have, we want to add up all the numbers, okay? And then you divide by the number of people, which is 16. And then to get the missing number or height, we would kind of reverse the process. So this is what we need to do. We need to say, the first six people times the 64, okay? Then we will add the nine, okay, all right, times the 74, okay? We're trying to get that, that value of all of them added together, all right? And then we just add in that x and we make that all equal to the 70.125. 
And we will add all of that to the 16 people. If you think it out, that makes sense because what we're doing is just going backwards to make this work, okay? All right, now, when you multiply all this out, or rather we're solving for x, it's just better just to solve for x. So what do we really have here? We have x equals, okay, the 70.125 times the 16 minus 6 times 64 minus the 9 times 74. Put that in the calculator and we should come up with a reasonable answer, okay? I'm going to use parentheses just to keep my order of operations. Right, I know it's going to work the way I enter it. You know, I know I'm not going to have a glitch when I enter Okay, so 70.125, that's times all the 16 people, okay? Then I will subtract, I'm going to put it in parentheses, the 6 times the 64, close parentheses, minus more parentheses, and that's the 9 times the 74, close my parentheses, okay? And you can see what I've entered, look at what I have. If you're not sure about this, stop the video. Think about what order of operations, what you did to achieve a mean, and what that means. Okay, let's push enter and see if we get a magic number. Yeah, 72, and that is the option. Okay, all right. Again, if you're not sure about what I just did, stop the video, do pencil it out, put it in your calculator, and justify it for yourself so you understand when you get hit with one of these questions. That's a good question for a test, just to see if you know what it means, what it's about. Okay, all right, now let's look at number nine. A list of numbers has no mode. Which one, a little typo there, bear with me here and we'll fix it, there we go. Which one of the following could represent the list? No mode, well, this kind of question, I really think that you would have something like this embedded in a more, more detailed question trying to get somewhere else, okay? So no mode. Well, a mode is a number that is repeated that you see the most, okay? Well, that can't be option A. That Everything there is a mode, okay? Okay, B, these are distinct independent values. 7, 8, 9, 10, counting from 7, whole digit to 12. Those are independent, distinct. I would say B is the option. There is no mode. Obviously, you have repeated numbers here. That's not going to work. And same thing with D. With D. Regardless of, you know, you can debate on who's the mode, if you have one mode or two modes, but it doesn't matter in this question because B would be the only appropriate option. Number 10, what is the value of the median for the following grouped data distribution? Okay, so for this one, we're trying to find out the middle value, and we do that by looking at the frequency first and then going to whichever class we need. Okay, and if you remember how we do that, first we add up the total frequency. In this case, it is 48. And we divide by 2. We just need to divide by 2 because we're looking for the median. We are not looking for any of the quartiles for this particular question. Okay, so this means we have 24. So we need to go to that center. And in this situation, you can very quickly see that we will need, it'll be like right in here. And we can say 24 from here to here, and then 24 from here to here. I'm not sure why that is moving around. Doesn't matter. Okay, so that tells me that we need 5 out of 8. Okay, 
and that our, if you remember how we get this, we go to the center and we look at how many numbers do we get for the, how many do we need in our frequency to get the center value? We need five out of eight in that row. Okay, then we look at not the limit, we look at the lower boundary. And that lower boundary is 32.5. And we look at the lower boundary because we're trying to capture everything in that class. All the possible numbers that could have been in the frequency. But we don't know what all those values are. So this is the best way we have to capture. Now, our formula tells us that we need to take the lower boundary of 32.5 and add that to, well, how many digits do we have, or, or rather numbers do we have in the class? Well, we would have nine values in this class on each row. So we need nine times five out of eight. Now, if we put this in the in the calculator, we should come out with something nice, okay? 32.5 plus and nine times our five divided by eight. Let's push, push enter. And yes, option A satisfies. That would be whatever those first values that we don't see anymore, that would be the median, okay? Let's go to number 11. All right, for number 11, if a grouped frequency distribution is negatively skewed, which one of the following inequalities is correct? Okay, negatively skewed means that the tail, the information is all on what you could say the negative side. So let me draw that and go through that. Now, if you're teaching, and I'm going to say from experience, when you have your middle school, this comes up in middle school, uh, which I've done, when we don't say that. We don't tell the kids negatively skewed, positively skewed, in and all honesty. Only a few professors said that. So I don't know if that's something that was said in the past. I don't know. We just need to know it. I've never seen it asked this way. Okay. So for negatively skewed, that means the information would be on the right and the tail would be on the positive end. Like if we were looking at a number line. So honestly, I would call this left skewed. Okay. And a left tail. Okay, negative skew, left tail, okay? All right, so this says that this would be your median, okay? And the mode is always on the opposite side of your tail. So this has to be mode, and this has to be, I'm gonna use a different color so we can see it, the mean. So the mean is always closest to your tail. Okay, so let's go over here and see if we have anything that does that. Your median is in the middle. Well, that won't work. That won't work. That won't work. Option B is all we have. And that is actually the correct answer. Okay, number 12. A list of individual data consists of, okay, three sevens, two twelves, five twenties, two twenty eights, and one thirty. In this situation, they want the value of the third quartile. Okay, so we are looking at, to get this quickly, you're looking at three, two, five, and the two, and the one. That's the best way to do it. And then look at where you end up. Okay, so hat. This is what I did. It was very simple to do. I said one, two, three, two here, one, two, three, four, five here, 
two here. And then for this one right here, I just put a one over here. Okay, let me switch back colors. Now I want three fourths of the information. Okay, well, let's see here. I have three, four, five. This is five, six, seven. Okay, five, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, so I went to the very center. Well, if it's 13, that it's the seventh value. Five, six, seven. You know what? Let's let's highlight. Use that one. Okay. That means I want the median or Q2 is that highlighted tally mark I have. Then I looked over to the right and I would I would look for wherever that quartile is, it'll be with that value. Okay, so on we have one, two, three, four, five on the right. So that means this value here in the middle, that tally, well, that's over the 228s. So that means that my uh, third quartile would be with Let's see, one, two, three, four, two, tw that would be 28. Let's double count that, double check and see what happens. Actually, I'm looking at it and I think I need to go over one different. Let's try this again. I have five, one, two, three, four, five twenties. Let's get rid of that, I think. Well, let's see. Come on. Okay, there it is. There. Let me let me redraw these. Okay, so I need to be right in the center. I have thirteen, so that would be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, I need to go over just slightly. I was too far over. Okay, now that makes sense. So then I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that would say that I need, I would have a value, see where I'm drawing my line in the green. That means my value would be right between 20 and 28. Okay, let's just pop this in the calculator. Don't do anything else. So you add those two numbers together, 20 plus 28 equals, divide by two, it's 24, and that is correct. That means that Q, Q3 would be 24, okay? Let me draw this like in a uh, box plot, okay? All right, so if we had a whisker, I may not be exactly correct on how my box plot, plot looks, but you know what? We could even put that in our data. Let's try that. I just want you to have a see what I'm doing if you're not sure how to do it. And you could also draw it out. So let's do and we could go ahead and do that with the calculator just to verify that my tallies and I how I did it, I shortcut it. Was my shortcut a good method? Maybe, maybe not, maybe, maybe not. Okay. So we need three of these, three sevens. So I have one, two, three. Now we need two twelves. Put those in. Okay. Five twenties. There's one, two, three, four, and I need one more. And that's five. Okay. Now we have two twenty eights. There's one, two, and we have a thirty tag in long. Okay, double check. Yes, okay, that looks good. Okay, now let's back out. We're going to do two things. First thing, let's push stat and arrow over to calc. We're going to use the one bars. Okay, but we're in L1, push enter. We do not need a frequency list. Not, we're not doing any other, any other calculations. Okay, let's look at there's our Q1, our median was 20, which I had, okay, I agree. And our Q3 is 24, so verify. Let's go over, you know, let's uh, go over here to our plotting. So let's go second plot, okay? And let's turn on 
our number one, load it at, and push enter. Now we still need to arrow over, and it looks like, yeah, we have the correct one. Remember, this first box whisker or box flat that I, you see highlighted, that one includes outliers, and you really need to do that for these situations. So let's do it to see what we get. Okay, so now what do we do? We push zoom, okay, and stat, and there it is. That's really what it should look like. So, and we've already verified the values. So let me erase a little and make mine look like that. So no matter what I did do, we know that this would be 24 and this would be 20. And Q1, I believe, was nine and a half. All right, you know what? Let's trace this and see what it does. Okay. When we trace, look, our, our median, it says MED 20. Let's go up and see. It gives us Q3 at 24. And then go over, and it is 9.5. Okay. And we could even get our low. Okay. And I don't know if I had done that in the other videos, but this is a quick way to look at what it should take a look in your you know against your test and the truth is you probably for a true test question they would give you the question and then in my opinion it would be more rigorous if they just give you gave you images and made you figure this out the way that we just did okay all right for this one this is the last question of the second part of three for quiz this quiz section set sessions or parts all right don't forget please subscribe to keep these uh, items coming and like us and share us and happy testing